picking up good vibrations. When we started the course, we made this analogy between the Fourier transform and the transformation that we could do when we are remotely piloting a quadcopter. Especially the rotation, so that our nose is aligned with the nose of the quadcopter, is very important. And it allows us to understand whether we should turn left or right and by how much. As a final note, I want to tell you that this is more than a simple analogy in the sense that the discrete Fourier transform DFT is in fact also a rotation. Now, in R3, a rotation can be characterized by a 3x3 three three matrix. We can obtain the, this matrix by rotating each of the unit vectors corresponding to the x, y, and z axis. The first column of this matrix is the unit vector corresponding to the rotation of the x unit vector. The second column of this matrix is the unit vector corresponding to the rotation of the y unit vector, and the third column is the unit vector corresponding to the rotation of the z unit vector. This means that all the columns of this rotation matrix are orthogonal. This implies that if we multiply the original matrix transposed by the original matrix, we obtain the identity matrix. But then the inverse of this rotation matrix is its transpose, and therefore R times R transpose is also the identity. Then R transpose must also be a rotation matrix, meaning that the rows of R must also be orthogonal, pretty much as the columns. Now, we said that the DFT, which is very connected to the Fourier series, can be computed by simply solving a linear system. This means applying a transformation to the original signal X. This transformation is actually a rotation as well. This matrix is also, also corresponds to a rotation. It is a rotation since the rows of these matrices, which are nothing more than the complex exponentials with different frequencies, are orthogonal. This means that we can write the DFT values of a signal as a rotation matrix times the signal itself. Each DFT value, capital X of K, is the projection of the signal with length capital N into a basis vector corresponding to a complex exponential. Exponential of minus J to pi or capital T K N n ranging from 0 until capital N minus 1. The VFT, therefore, is nothing more than a rotation, and it can be your new glasses to look at signals. Instead of looking at signals in time, rotating them with a VFT and looking at them in frequency can unravel much about the signal and can be very important in many, many applications. We have come full circle. I hope that you have enjoyed the course and that you can use the free transform in many, many engineering applications.